Good morning, good day, how are you this wonderful day? Uh, does anyone know what that's from? If you know what that's from, put it in chat. Let me know. It was a very specific reference. Hi, welcome to the Daily Creative Challenge. My name is Andrew Hockrattle. Unfortunately, this is our last Daily Creative Challenge. Aww. Last one together, though. They are going to be re-airing over the next two weeks to do a creative replay if you want to tune in for those. If you're watching the creative replay, hi, hello, glad to have you here and thanks for tracking with us. Um, there will be a new host next week if you're watching the creative replay. I believe Julia is up next, so you'll have a great time with her. All right, let's go ahead and hop into our daily creative challenge. If you're joining us for the first time, you don't know what this is, uh, which is great because I'm going to tell you. Uh, also, if you're on YouTube, you're in the wrong place. We love you, but we need you to come over to Behance. Behance.net slash Adobe Live is the place to be. So um, the thing that we're doing today is a daily creative challenge. And right here is where you can get involved. You can watch any of the replays if you've missed them over the last two weeks. And today we are doing an art wrap. You will need the source file today because we're going to be talking about Adobe stock and I have a link in there for you to download an awesome free resource. So grab this behance.net slash challenge slash illustrator. Um, it will have a link in there for you to work alongside us today. You also can join our discord community over there bit.ly slash AI discord. That's the place to be. You can post your work, get involved with our awesome thriving community of people that are all learning illustrator just like you. So Let's go ahead, jump in today. We have a lot to cover. We're gonna be talking about Adobe Stock. We'll be talking about clipping masks. We'll be doing colors. And if you were here for the past challenge when we talked about libraries, we'll be using those assets. So I, I tricked you a little bit. I know I tricked you into getting on board with this challenge. If you created assets during our libraries session, we're gonna use those today and dive into our libraries to uh, put some application on them, right? So they've done just uh, shapes that are existing in the Adobe Cloud, um, they'll come real. All right, so let's go ahead and take to the skies on Hawk Airlines. If you're just joining us and you've missed it, we're doing an airline theme for our challenges. So let's go ahead and take off and I will see you in just a second. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um... We're embarking on our final flight of this leg. Uh, thanks so much for joining us and Flying Hawk Airlines. Uh, today, we're actually going to be making you the pilot. We're going to be giving you a plane of your own. Um, go ahead and decorate it and uh, do whatever you want. And we're going to let you take to the skies. Thanks again for flying with us these last two weeks. If you want to go ahead and open up your illustrators, uh, buckle your seatbelts, and get ready to learn about clipping masks. All right, so we're here in the cockpit, and as you can see, it, it looks a little it looks a little bit different, right? Um, things are looking a little bit different today, and that's because I'm in a clipping mask. I have existed in a clipping mask, and I wanted to show you what it looks like and kind of get the idea of what a clipping mask is. A uh, clipping mask is basically just a window. Uh, it's basically just a window, and an illustrator, you can designate what you want that window to be. So think about your object as a wall, right? And you are on the other side of that wall right now, right? It could be all completely blacked out and you wouldn't see anything, but I have punched a hole in that wall. I've created a circle and said, hey, illustrator, I want you to put a window where this circle is. And now there's a window for you all to see me, right? You can see me through, <laughs> through the little uh, the peep right there. So this is what it looks like to be in a clipping mask. I wanted you to understand that concept before we got started. There we go. And if we take the clipping mask off, you can see now you have the full view of me because there is no clipping mask there. So now that we understand how clipping masks work, let's go ahead and hop into Adobe Illustrator and talk about our challenge for the day. So today we are going to be making an artistic vinyl wrap using shapes, colors, and clipping masks. And guess what shapes and colors we're gonna be using? That's right, the ones from our library yesterday. So let's go ahead and hop into our challenge. The first thing that I want you to do is I want you to use Adobe Stock. So Adobe Stock, I have a link for you right here, and we are gonna use this link, so you can just double click and then hit Command A, and then Command C to copy. So you're copying all of that, and then we're going to paste it into our browser. Now, it 
it's going to take you to this page right here. We'll get there in a second. This is what we're going to be using today. It's an awesome stock asset. And the best thing about this asset is that it is free. So if you go to stock.adobe.com slash free, there are a ton of incredible resources for you for free right? I don't know if you know this. It's included in, in your creative cloud. They're free. And you can search these, use these in your designs. If you don't want to make things from scratch, you can grab them here, use them in your challenges, play around and see what you can create. So we searched for plane and this came up as an awesome vector. So what we're going to do is I'm actually just going to save this to my library. Uh, you may have to push a button that says license, and then we are going to save to library. So we click there and look at this. It has saved it to my <laughs> CCM slides library, uh, which is not the one that I want it to be in. So I can hit manage and it will show me all of my libraries here. Now, I believe yesterday we were using, um, I don't remember what our library was yesterday. Let's see, let's just do DCC colors because I believe that that is what we called it the other day. Or did we call it sunset? I don't know. I'll put it in DCC colors and see where it goes. So I have saved to library. It is syncing, 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 moving to that library. And when we open up Illustrator again here, we can grab it out of that library. So let's see what that library was yesterday. Uh, let's let it sync here, initiate. There we go. It was social shapes. All right, so I'm gonna come back here and I'm just gonna sync that to social shapes. So you can search through your libraries. Let's see, oh, no, it's creating a new one, no, stop. All right, so you can sing it to your library, I did it wrong, or you can just click this button, open an app, and I wanna open it in Illustrator, and it's going to open that for me in Illustrator. Let's see, actually, we can just grab it here, let's do this. CCM slides, it will be in here, this is where it's saved initially. Uh, and then I moved it to DCC colors. Oh, y'all, we're having a hard time here. All right, here's what I'm going to do. Another thing. We're just going to click here and re-download for free. Look at that. We're downloading it, and we're going to click, and it's going to open it for us. Look at that. What magic. So we're going to grab this and just copy and paste it onto our artboard right there. I'm using the scale tool to just scale this up. And then there are some things happening around here. It looks like there's a background. So we're just going to double click in here and click on this white background and then delete it. We don't need it. All right. So now we have our plane here. I'm going to use a scale tool to scale it up just a little bit more. And we are looking great. Now, what we're going to do is, first of all, we are going to change the colors. Um, the colors here look awesome, but I don't want this to be blue. I actually want this blue to fill in with one of our colors from yesterday. Or maybe we're going to use all of our colors from yesterday. And so we're going to use our social shapes library that we have right here. Um, and this looks really good, right? We've got some cool shapes here. And what I can do is I can actually grab this blue, hitting A, which is the direct selection tool. And then we're going to go to select and we're going to click on same fill and stroke and it will select everything that is that blue color. Um, I want to make it green. And now we have all of that green or all of that blue has been replaced with that green, right? It looks pretty good. Um, and that's pretty much all that I want to do. I think I want to change out that one color. Maybe we want the cockpit here also to be that different color. So we're going to hit select again, same fill and stroke. And then maybe we want it to be pink, orange. Let's do orange. Orange looks pretty fine. And then one more time down here, select and uh, same, select, same, fill and stroke. And here I actually want to grab this orange using the eyedropper tool. And then I'm going to double click in here and make it just a little bit darker so that it has a little bit of that shadow. All right, so we've changed the colors easy using our library right here. Now, I do want to add on some of the graphics that we've used in yesterday's challenge. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is I definitely want to add these stars and sparkles to the back. Now, if I just grab these and click out of our library, it's going to add a bunch of crazy, right? It's just kind of in there. It's not really doing much. Uh, we want to apply it to the tail here. So what I can do is I'm going to leverage this and I'm going to shrink it down and put it in the place that I would want it to go. We want it to overlap a little bit and I want it to just exist kind of in this green area here. Now, here's what we're gonna do. Because this whole shape is grouped, I can't make a clipping mask with something that is grouped. You need one shape 
just one shape to make a clipping mask. And again, it's like a window. We're basically going to be saying, hey, Illustrator, make a window in the shape of this green area. And what's behind the window is going to be the stars. So what we'll do is we're actually going to send these stars to the background. We're going to right click and transform, sorry, arrange and send to back. And again, we're working with a window. A clipping mask is just a window. Now, the easy way to do this, because the shape is a group and there's a lot going on here, the easiest way to do this would be actually to just grab the direct selection tool, which is the white one up here, which is A. Click onto our green shape and hit con uh, copy, control C, and then paste in place. We can go to edit, paste, or we can go to paste in place. You want paste in place because it will lock in what that looks like right there, paste in place. Um, and if you're in chat, let me know what shapes and uh, what elements you wanna put on your plane. If you've created them already, let me know. And if not, let me know what you want to put on there. So we are going to paste in place and it will put that right above our stars. So now we have an extra version. Now we're going to select the stars as well as our shape and we are going to right click and hit make clipping mask. And again, before we do that, I do wanna point out what's happening. It is going to say this shape right here, we are going to punch out of a wall and behind that wall are stars. So we're selecting both of those to say these are the two elements we're working with and we're going to right click and then go to make clipping mask. Boom. And what's happened is it has made that clipping mask right over the shape that we have created, right? Uh, a lot of people are going to put flags, snakes. Yes, I'd love to put uh, see someone put like the teeth on the front of the plane. I love that. I think it's so cool. So there's a problem here, and that problem is that there are things that are augmenting the background here. If we zoom in, there are uh, some lines right here that are multiplied, and then some highlights here that I believe are overlaid. So if I select these, let's see here. Oh, I selected the wrong thing. Uh, so right now, these are in the front with our copy. So what we're going to do is we actually want that to go behind. And if we change it to go behind right now with the shapes that we've set up, if we go to arrange and send backward, it's going to send it behind the entire plane because that whole plane is one group. So we're going to use isolated images to put a clipping mask inside this group. So we're going to delete what we just did. You can do it that way. I just wanted to show you. And we are going to double click into this group. You can see that it's selected everything. And I'm going to double click into this group. So we have it selected, boom, boom, double click. Now you can see that I can select just that object, right? And because these other shapes are augmenting it, um, I'll bet if we look in here in our transparency panel, yep, it is screen and it is multiply, which means that there are shapes above that green that are changing the color of that green. So if we're going to put something on the green, it needs to maintain underneath those shapes that are augmenting it. So we're gonna do one more time. We are going to copy, control C, and then we are going to go to edit and paste in place. So now it's given us that green shape again, great. But we are still in the group. As you can see here, we're still in the group. So we're able to have more control over the layers. I'm gonna go ahead and drag in my sparkles and we're gonna to click to add those sparkles in a little bit too much. So I'm gonna scale them down using S and there we go. Now we want to punch the window, so we're going to right click, arrange, and send to back. And then from there, we're going to select both the shape and the star and go to right click and make clipping mask. All right, we've done it. Looks great, but again, it's still overlapping. What we need to do here is we are going to right click and go to arrange and send backward. So the hotkey for this is control and bracket. So you can right click and just do send backward or you can control and then hit bracket. Let me see if that actually shows up. Yes, uh, send backward is control and you can see the bracket right there. So we're just gonna keep hitting that until it goes back to where we want it to be. So you can see there that now it has gone behind the screen, but we want it behind this multiply. So I'm gonna keep hitting that control and left bracket until we get all the way behind all of those shapes. So now it's behind these shapes, it's behind the augmentations, and we have a nice version of the plain tail that has that clipping mask with all of the augmentations still going through. And yes, I love hotkeys for that function because you can go back and forth really, really quickly. 
So that looks great, um, but maybe I wanna change the color of the stars, right? We learned about this yesterday. We can double click into here and it will open up that, that library that we've created. We can select all of these and I want them to be blue. So I can select all of them and change them to blue. I'm going to hit save with just control S, close this object, and now it's updated our plane to blue. I like blue a lot better. Now, we can also augment things using clipping masks for larger objects or multiple objects, right? So let's go ahead and click into our plane one more time, just double click. And you can see that this whole front barrel, right? We talked about maybe putting teeth on it. I wanna put this swish that goes from the front all the way through. So if I click on one of these, what's interesting is it's just the top, right? Um, it's just the top. Oh, and yes, great example. You can also use the layers panel. If you need to rearrange things, you can come in here to the layers panel and it will show you all of the different objects. So it's a lot, but the layers panel does show you everything so you can rearrange if you want to do it manually. Um, so we only have one of these selected, but we want to go through all of these different shapes. So what we can do is because there's one down here, and yes, Clever, I actually got to try this and even got it to work. That's what these daily creative challenges are for. Uh, that's why I love when you all work alongside me because I see your comments and it's great that we're creating together. Uh, and it makes me so happy to see that you are following along and doing things. Yay, we're doing it. All right. So we have a shape underneath and a shape on top. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold shift and select both of these. You can see that both are selected here. And again, I'm just going to go to edit, copy and then edit and paste in place. Now, if I wanna put my little swoosh here, I can drag that swish and we have it from our Creative Cloud library. I'm gonna make it so that it looks pretty close to where I want it to be on the front here. We are gonna stretch it out a bit, uh, maybe to there, that looks pretty good. And now I'm going to grab my shape, right? I need to send this to the back. So we are going to right click, arrange, send to back and I'm gonna grab my two shapes. Now with those two selected, I grab the background to say, Illustrator, let's punch out that window. Now watch what happens here. We're actually gonna do something wrong. So don't do this, but I wanna show you. We're gonna right click and hit make clipping mask. What it's gonna do is it's only going to make the clipping mask with the top object. So because those two objects that I had selected, these two green areas are separate, it is making a clipping mask with this and saying, hey, punch a hole in the wall that I can see through this but in the background, I want this and this, right? And so we're not able to see this bottom shape because it's not showing us. So what we can do is we're gonna click on these two and we need to make it a compound shape that basically says, hey, Illustrator, we're going to be punching out this whole thing as if these two shapes are actually one shape. So we're gonna do a compound path by going to object, compound path and make. Now you have to have both of those selected. So now we have a compound path. We are going to select our back object with the compound path selected, right click, and then make clipping mask. So we are making a clipping mask with the top object, which happens to be a compound path. So we click there and check that out. Now we've got our swoosh going across, but again, it is too far up and it's overlapping some of the stuff. So what I'm gonna do actually this time is I'm gonna right click and go to transform and or arrange and send to back. That will send it all the way back. And then I'm just going to use the other bracket. So the right bracket using control or command and the right bracket to bring it forward just enough to go over some of the shapes. There we go. That's looking nice and fun to me. Again, I'm not in love with how that's looking. And so maybe I want to change it up a little bit. Now, the best way to do that is to select our clipping mask right here and we can double click. And then when we select this, we can literally drag it and augment this and it will stay inside those shapes. So maybe we want it to just be a little bit different to go, there we go, that looks a little bit better. I don't want it coming out the top there. Uh, maybe I do want it out the top just a little bit. Mm, maybe I don't, maybe we just want it underneath. There we go. So that looks pretty good to me. And now we can double click out and you'll see that we were working just in that. We are working just inside that clipping mask. And again, if we want to change this color, let's go ahead and do blue, double click on the squish, select it, use our library to put that color in there. 
and then we're gonna save it and boom. Now we have a nice blue. Ooh, look at our plane. That's looking great. All right, let's do one more thing here. And that one thing that I wanna do is change the colors to augment this plane. Um, let's say that we want to do a, a different variation of this. And this is a little bit out of our scope, but we're going to make a copy, control C and control V to make a copy of this plane. And we're going to select this plane. And what I wanna do is I actually want to make uh, a palette with all of our colors. So with the plane selected, um, actually, let's go ahead and just make some boxes. So we're gonna make some boxes here and we're just gonna make four boxes and grab our colors out of the uh, library. I forgot how words worked. So we're gonna select all of these and then make a palette just using this folder with all of these selected and it will grab all of these colors for us. So now I can select my shape right here of my plane and we're going to go to edit and edit colors. We're gonna click on recolor artwork and then click on advanced options. And what that's gonna do is it's actually listing all of the colors that we have used here. Now, all of these grays and whites, I don't necessarily want to be included at all. And so what I can do is I can grab some of these colors. So I can double click here. And with this, I can see what colors I wanna to change to, right? So if I want to augment this dark orange, I can simply pick a different color. So I can click on color swatches and pick any colors that we have in here. Um, and these are our swatches down at the bottom. So we've already created these, these are the swatches that we can use. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna replace this orange uh, with maybe the blue, right? Let's make the, uh, let's make the color blue there. So I am gonna make this a little bit of a darker blue and you'll see that it's changing in real time. So this orange is going to go to color swatches and we'll click on the blue that we've been using in other places. It will change out that orange for us. Now maybe we wanna change out the blue that we've been using. We can scroll down, where's our blue? Uh, is it this? It's not this. Uh, let's go ahead and pick the green out and change that green again to our color swatches. Let's do pink so we can have a pink and blue plane. That'll be fun. So it's changed all of that pink for us. Um, and that is looking good. The thing that is happening that I'm seeing here is it is not changing the color of our shapes. And the reason is we haven't unlinked them, right? They are still linked shapes. So if we wanted to change these and include them in our edit artwork, the error that I made there is I would wanna click and drag these and hold alt or option and then click and it would make them into paths. Now, if I have these in there as paths, we would be able to edit colors and change them, but because they are linked graphics, we cannot edit those colors and change them. So play around with that. When you pull in your vectors from your library, go ahead and hold that alt option and just put them in as vectors so that we can see if we wanna change colors, it'll be easier, um, or you can use them as linked graphics. Do whatever you want, there's no rules. Um, so thank you so much for joining for these daily creative challenges. It's been a blast and hopefully you all have learned something. Um, and yes, uh-oh, clever, that is right. I, I make mistakes all the time and you are all here to teach me um, and learn it together with me. So thanks so much for joining me for these daily creative challenges. They will be on replay for the next two weeks if you wanna join us. And then we'll be back with our friend Julia to do another set, um, which are gonna be super fun. I got a little preview of them. There's some good stuff in there. Julia always has a great time. As always, you can join our Discord by going over here to bit.ly slash AI Discord. Uh, it will be continuing over the next two weeks. People will be posting work that are watching the creative replays. Um, and I can't wait to see your planes and the colors you come up with, the designs you come up with uh, to make some awesome planes. And here's what I wanna see, especially for this challenge. Put your sunsets behind this. Take the sunset challenge and put it behind your plane. Leave those clouds and then we'll have a whole beautiful thing that we've created together. Um, I literally have one minute, but let's see if I have my sunset saved. Uh, ingredients, I do, yes, all right. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this in here and we're gonna put it all the way behind our plane and this is how I will send you out flying deep into the sunset here on Adobe Live. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for taking to the skies and thank you for joining me 
on this flight. I can't wait to see your final wrap up with your gradients, with your gorgeous planes flying through the sky. And it's been my honor to be your host and guide. Again, you can follow me on all social media at hawk.co, H-O-C-H-D-O-T-C-O. I'll see you again in the friendly skies, signing out.